Afternoon. We heard that phrase once again from the governor, Brexit-related uncertainties. Do you think they are really playing out here? Well, I'd say three things. First of all, the Bank of England are notoriously bad at forecasting. They don't do very well and haven't done very well over the years, so we should always take it with a piece, pinch of salt. Secondly, of course, the Bank of England, the Treasury Department and the CBI collectively ran Project Fear, and that's a little bit of what's happening at the moment. There's a concerted effort to talk down uh, the Brexit process. But thirdly, and most importantly, of course, is that actually I agree with the government of the Bank of England that business confidence is lower than it ought to be, but that's largely because of the incompetence of our Chancellor of the Exchequer, who's not actually embracing the new economy that Brexit will provide, and only Brexit can provide, as instead trying to hang on to a poorer version of what we have now. Because, many would say, the government itself is in some disarray as the way forward. Well, they are in some disarray as the way forward, and the best way of resolving that, of course, is either to get the Treasury Department to actually recognise the fact that Brexit provides huge opportunities to grow the economy and needs to make a statement about that in the autumn budget so that business confidence then picks up and we actually start to grow, or we ought to get a new Chancellor. A new Chancellor? That's... Uh... Well, I haven't heard you say that before. Well, we ought to have somebody in the uh, Treasury Department uh, who's going to drive economic policy in a way that will actually embrace the opportunities that Brexit provides. You know, only by leaving the European Union can we do all the things that will boost the economy. We have to leave the single market in the customs union, not remain in them for transitional periods. We can act, repatriate in the net contribution, better use of the gross contribution, that's 24 billion all told per annum. The repatriation of fisheries, reducing tariffs on external products coming into the UK, which will reduce the cost of living for hardworking families, uh, investing in uh, tax cuts in a digital economy and also deregulation. All those things are, we're prevented from doing by being members of the European Union at the moment. Yeah. And only by doing those things can we boost the economy. And what the government should do is announce that that's what's going to happen. It's, they're entirely within the gift of the UK government, independent of negotiations with the EU. Once we leave, we can implement them and the economy will boom. But many people say, well, actually, a transitional deal might just carry us through, just take away a bit of the uncertainty, mean that we don't face this, this date where suddenly everything changes. Well, the and just transitional deal is simply producing more uncertainty because it's lengthening the process. If the government make an announcement this autumn of what the post-Brexit economy for the next five years will look like and what the economic policy will be, business then has over 18 months to prepare for Brexit. That's the transitional period. The only thing we will need any transitional periods for after Brexit is to deal with some of the administrative issues, which naturally might take a little bit of time to play out. But we shouldn't accept any transitional deals that prevent us implementing the things that will boost the economy, like trade deals, for example. So wh what would it take Philip Hammond to do in the autumn statement for you, at the end of it, to say, actually, no, you can keep your job for a bit longer? Well, he should set out a five-year plan for the post-Brexit economy. He should be aiming for a low-tax, high-growth UK economy. He shouldn't be looking for austerity as the way out of our debt situation. He should be looking for growth. He should be implementing measures to improve infrastructure, to uh, repatriate fisheries, to remove tariffs which add costs to consumers in the UK, thus boosting the, the uh, available cash that people have to spend and making them better off rather than worse off, which is what he's doing at the moment. All those sorts of things and the use of our net contribution of nearly 12 billion a year, the better use of the balance of the gross contribution of nearly 12 billion a year. These are huge sums of money every year that the government can utilise to actually boost the economy. John Longworth, thank you very much for your time.